the process of carbon capture. The EPA just a few weeks ago finalized the regulation for CO2 emissions. They are looking for about a 32% decrease in CO2 emissions across the country between now and 2030. CO2 drives global climate change, which is manifest by warming. The technology that SES is commercializing, we call it cryogenic carbon capture. We are essentially freezing the CO2 out of the exhaust of a power plant and then separating the solid from the gas prior to that exhaust being vented back to the atmosphere. Due to the sensitive nature of the freezing points of the elements, a trained professional must be watching all variables at all times. One of the most important variables is temperature. The tail end of a coal combustion process. The sparkles that you see here are coal particles that are just finishing their combustion process. And we would sample flue gas from here and take it through our process to show the CO2 capture. There are multiple processes going on at the same time, and every worker is responsible for knowing each step, and responding to every flashing light. Again, maintaining strict control of the environment of the gas is crucial. The cryogenic carbon capture process works by first cooling the flue gases down to very cold temperatures, about a negative 120 degrees C. At that temperature, the CO2 that's in the flue gas has formed a solid. It is, in fact, dry ice. So we then separate the solids from the gases. One of the advantages of this process is it removes not just the CO2, but the NOx, the SOx, other pollutants that cause the haze that you see. Each piece of specialized machinery serves a specific purpose. Due to the complexity of the machinery, consistent calibration is a necessity. The margin for error is extremely small that we developed at BYU is hands down the most cost-effective and energy-efficient process I know of for doing this separation. This technology has fairly routinely removed 96 to 98 percent of the CO2, so we'll still have a smokestack and it will still have gases coming out of it, but there won't be any carbon dioxide or, for that matter, almost any other pollutant. These engineers are always working to improve this system. So there's no need to hold your breath. Work on a technology that has so much potential for doing so much good in the world is an extraordinarily gratifying thing to be involved in.